and you were not able to address other cases, I wanted to ask you whether or not you were familiar with, with a few other cases. Sandy Rogers and Scotty Richardson from Aiken, South Carolina. Are you familiar with that case? No, sir. Uh, how about Roger Dale Rice from Lawrence, South Carolina? Are you familiar with that case? No, sir. Eric Nicholson or Marcus Whitfield from Greenville, South Carolina. Are you familiar with that case? No, sir. Russ Sorrow from Greenville, South Carolina. No, sir. Or Kevin Carper from Spartanburg, South Carolina. No, sir. Uh, Professor, those are just a handful of the more than 340 police officers who were killed in the line of duty in South Carolina. And Kevin Carper's case is most instructive because his partner did CPR on the suspect that killed Kevin, trying to save his life. Uh, let me ask it another way. Are you familiar with the case of Ricky Samuel? No, sir. Um, How about Tamika Houston? No, sir. How about Nell Lindsay? No, sir. Miranda All? No, sir. Santiago Rios? No, sir. Those are all folks that were the victim of intra-racial homicides in South Carolina. And I hasten to add there were not protests either with any of those police officer killings or any of the intra-racial killings. And I suspect you agree with me, Professor, that all lives matter, whether you're killed by a police officer or your next door neighbor, you're every bit as dead, aren't you? Yes, sir. Um, I right. actually, as a former prosecutor and someone who's worked with police officers, have the deepest respect for them. Uh, so, do, so do I. And despite that deep respect, Professor, um, I still maintain the objectivity of prosecuting police officers who engaged in misconduct. We have a process in place, if you don't think you can be fair. It's called recusal which is what some of us did in every single one of our officer-involved shootings. We recused it to another prosecutor so he or she could make that decision. So there is a process in place. You called for a process. There is one. It's called recusal. Do you know, as a former prosecutor, or can you deign what may have been the biggest impediment to our being able to successfully prosecute homicide cases, particularly homicide cases involving victims of color in my criminal justice jurisdiction. Do you know what the biggest impediment was? In Massachusetts, one of the biggest impediments is trying to get witnesses to come forward. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. You have a victim of color, and we had trouble getting witnesses to cooperate with law enforcement and prosecutors which then, as you know, diminishes the quality of that case and your ability to prosecute it, which may result in a lesser plea bargain because you don't have the facts, which may then result in what you said in your opening statement, which is people have a tendency to treat black lives differently than white, when the reality is the case wasn't quite as good. Isn't that a possibility, too? It, for every prosecutor um, who's out there, this is a serious problem, and you are correct in pointing that out, sir. Right, and it, and, and it wasn't just me pointing it out, Professor. Um, I happen to have a fantastic chief of police when I was the DA, fantastic man by the name of Tony Fisher, who happened to be an African-American chief of police. And he lamented the exact same thing you and I are talking about, is the loss of life in his community and the refusal of people to cooperate, even in a drive-by shooting of an eight-year-old at a birthday party, a drive-by shooting outdoors where the whole world saw the car drive by and nobody would cooperate with the prosecution in, in, in the murder of an eight-year-old. So I hope that part of this 21st century police strategies conversation that we're having includes getting people to cooperate with law enforcement so you can hold people to the exact same standard regardless of the race of the victim. Because let me tell you what my goal is. My goal is for witnesses to feel comfortable cooperating. But here's my other goal, and I'm out of time, but I'm going to share it with you. I want us to get to the point where we lament the death, the murder of a black female like Nell Lindsay just as much if it's at the hand of an abusive husband, which it was, 
as we would if it had been at the hand of a white cop. I'd like to get to the point where we're equally outraged at the loss of life. And I hope we can get there. National television. This no, that, no, 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 sir. With all due respect, they do not. We're, we just heard email after email after email about Libya and Benghazi that Sidney Blumenthal sent to the Secretary of State. I don't care if he sent it by Morse code, carrier pigeon, smoke signals. The fact that he happened to send it by email is irrelevant. What is relevant is that he was sending information to the Secretary of State. That is what's relevant. Now, with respect to the subpoena, if he'd bothered to answer the telephone calls of our committee, he wouldn't have needed a subpoena. Well, would the gentleman yield? I'll be happy to, but you, you need to make sure the entire record is yeah, correct, Mr. Cohen. And that's exactly what I want to do. Well, then go and ahead. I'm about to tell you. I move that we uh, put into the record the entire transcript of Sidney Blumenthal. We're going to release the emails. Let's do the transcript. Uh, that way the world can see it. Well, we, we, we didn't. We the motion didn't. has been seconded. Well, we're not going to take that up at a hearing. We'll, we'll take that Mr. up Chairman, in a business I have consulted meeting. with the parliamentarian, and they have informed us that we have a right to a recorded vote on that, on that motion. We want, you know, you well, have the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, that's what we want to have. Put, let the, the world see it. Why is it that you only want Mr. Blumenthal's transcript released? Why don't you I'd want like the to have survivors? All of them released. The survivors, even their let, names? Let me you want tell you that? No, you, you know, want that released? Let me tell you something. Right now, the only one right you've now, asked for is Sidney no, Blumenthal. The That's only, the only one you've asked for. That and Miss Mills. Cheryl Mills. Look. Cheryl Mills. That's not true. No, that's two out of 54. Now, if you want to ask for some fact yeah, witnesses. We asked for a recorded vote on the, on the, the that, Blumenthal. That, you, you said that. from the beginning, we want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Why don't we just put the entire transcript out there and let the world see it? What do you have to hide? These are the only emails that you have released. And the fairness to Mr. Blumenthal and to the American people, in the interest of a complete record, if you're going to release his emails, release his transcript where he has a chance to give the context of those emails. Well, you keep referring to Blumenthal emails. I would hasten to remind both of you, the only reason we have Blumenthal emails is because he emailed the Secretary of State. Those are her emails. That's, That's why they were released. They're not Blumenthal's emails, and she wanted all of her emails released. She's been saying since March, I want the entire world to see my emails. Well, Sidney Blumenthal's emails are part of that. So here's what I'll do. I'll be happy to, to, to talk to the parliamentarian because the parliamentarian told me that your motion actually would not be in order for a hearing. But, but at the latest, we'll, we'll take a vote. The, the, the first week we are back, after this week, we'll have a business meeting. We can take up Mr. Blumenthal's transcript. We can take up whatever other transcripts you want. And while we're there, we can also take up the 20 some odd outstanding discovery requests that we have to different executive branch entities. Why don't we just take Mr. all of it up then? Mr. Chairman, the allegations that have been made against him are refuted by his own testimony in the interest of not having... That's your opinion, well, Adam. Well, if you disagree, then release the transcripts. Why? What, what, why, what, why, what, do, allega why, what allegation, why, Adam? Why conceal the transcripts? Even if the motion were not in order, you have the power to release them. You have the power I, to I'll tell right you why, now, because I'm not going to release one transcript of someone who knows nothing about Libya by his own admission, while people who risk their lives, you have no interest in their story getting you out. Spend, you, you, don't spend, want the, you don't want the 18 DS agents. You don't want the CIA agents. The only transcripts you want released are Miss Mills and Sidney Blumenthal. Mr. Chairman, so the, we'll, the we'll only, take all of this only, up in The only in person you were interested in asking about during your entire questioning was Sidney Blumenthal. If you're so interested in him, Release the transcript. Uh, I, you, you selectively released his emails. They're the only witness you've done that for. Uh, so you're asking why are we only asking for his I, I, transcript? I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask the gentleman from California to please do a better job of characterizing. These are not Sidney Blumenthal's emails. These are Secretary Clinton's emails. And I'll tell you what, if you think you've heard about Sidney Blumenthal so far, wait till the next round. Sure, With that, we're adjourned. Our fellow citizens' frustration with government, they are absolutely convinced that we spend their money differently from the way that we would spend our own, and they are exactly correct. The rest of America cannot comprehend of a $44 breakfast. They are pouring generic brand cereal while you are eating a $44 breakfast. The rest of America would never conceive of a $7 Monte Cristo mini sandwich. And neither would you if you were spending your own money. 
You don't go out of your pocket and buy commemorative coins. I don't know anyone who does that. But we don't hesitate to spend taxpayer money on a trinket like that. Giving bicycles to indigent children is a wonderful idea. I hate that you robbed yourself of the satisfaction of knowing what it feels like to do it yourself instead of spending someone else's money to do it. The ostensible purpose of this hearing was to exchange ideas. You know, Alexander Graham Bell has this marvelous invention called a telephone. Or better yet, video conferencing. The notion that you have to spend $800,000 to exchange ideas is laughable and perhaps criminal. And the part that galls me the most is the hypocrisy of GSA not even following its own damn rules. You are so quick to make everyone else follow the rules, and you can't follow your own rules. You have an event planner on staff. That will come as quite a surprise to most taxpayers. What will come as even more of a surprise is the fact that you didn't even use them. You paid somebody else to plan the event despite the fact that you have event planners at taxpayer salary. And the scouting trips. You know, Mr. Chairman, the tribes of Israel sent 12 scouts into the promised land before they decided to invade, and GSA has to spend, send 15 to Las Vegas to check out a hotel. Do you not see the outrage in that? Mr. Robertson, do you see it? Absolutely. This conference was outrageous. Well, I'm not going to be as self-congratulatory as some other people are. I think the fact that we're having a hearing is a loss. Most people don't need a hearing to know that you don't spend other people's money the way that money was spent at this conference. We don't need a list of recommendations from the Inspector General. We don't need to be reminded that you can't negotiate a discount on a purse because the, the, the U.S. government decided to contract with a hotel. That is criminal. And a mind reader? My guess is they will not need a mind reader to find out the American public has lost confidence in the institutions of government and the response. I want indictments, Mr. Inspector General. That's a great way to get people's attention, an indictment. Not a memo, not corrective measure, an indictment. I went through your report and I wrote 25 times, what's the penalty? What's the penalty for doing what you found that they did? What is the penalty for negotiating a discount on a purse for your personal use because you work for the government and you steered work? What's the, purpose, what's the penalty for tipping off a competitor of another bid? That sounds remarkably criminal to me, Mr.